Look at all you fucking spoiled brats. You fucking dorks. God damn it. Last night, you dorks were fucking spoiled. And I mean that not in a disrespectful manner when I call you guys you spoiled brats and shit like that. Because let's be real about it. Who would have not loved Saturday night? Literally, literally last night. You had your wrestling. You had your combat sports. You had UFC in Sacramento. The return of Uriah Faber. You had Evolve on the WWE Network. Despite how you may feel about it. And of course you had All Elite Wrestling's Fight for the Fallen. On free for Bleacher Report Live. On Bleacher Report Live. Anyway guys, this is your AEW Fight for the Fallen review my overall thoughts this is also by the way guys another installment of around the point thank you all for tuning in here today it is sunday july the 14th 2019 it is extreme rule sunday and i thank you all for tuning in today if you are new to the channel hit that subscribe button down below give the video a big old thumbs up and share this video throughout your entire social media platform wherever you share videos you can follow me on the Twitter at Heel Steve. And the same goes for Instagram, the grandma, all the kids will call it. And of course, over at Snapchat, all at Heel Steven. And here I am, guys. Holy crap. You see me. Holy shit. I see you too. Put down the fucking burrito, you fucking fat slobs, if you will. And before I go any further, I want to thank the homie Salrex for this awesome fucking video overlay that you see here, as well as the thumbnail that he did as well for this podcast tonight or today for Around the Point. If you people are a YouTuber or a podcaster and you want awesome, awesome graphics and overlays and logos done for your podcast or your respective YouTube channel, or whatever the fuck it may be. You just want awesome graphic works done, period. But in my opinion, the best graphic designer today in the internet wrestling community, the entire IWC as a whole, that you got to contact my boy Salrex over on Twitter at SRXGFX. Tell him that I sent you. The guy does amazing graphic work, not just, not just for me, but for the likes of JD from NY206, The Solid Monster, House of Glory, Big Mike, myself, and many other people out there as well that he has done work for. He is amazing. He's the best. If you don't believe me, go hit him up and he'll work with you. Believe me when I tell you that, you fucking dorks. Now, like I said, you guys were spoiled, literally spoiled yesterday with your wrestling. Holy shit. I've never seen anything quite like it yesterday. You had your Evolve on the WWE Network. And again, despite how you may feel about it and all that stuff. Indie wrestling on the fucking WWE Network. And then also on this, as, as, it, as that was happening, you also had Fight for the Fallen on Bleacher Report Live, which was free. I know a lot of people had trouble watching it through Bleacher Report Live. I luckily did not have to go to that problem. I did not have to go to that problem during double during um during Fighter Fest, nor did I have to go to that problem for Fight for the Fallen. It luckily was free. This was basically uh, AEW's, I guess I, I want to say the go-home show, if you will, until All Out coming up in August, which is a couple weeks from now when you think about it. Everything's going so fast right now. And to me, I'm going to say this right now, I did enjoy the setup for Fight for the Fallen. It was at a theater. It looked like a, like a music hall concert. I think it was called City Palace. If I butchered it, I apologize. I just want to make sure real quick. Um, the name of the place. I want to make sure the name of the place. But again, I thought overall it was well, very well done. They had that um, WCW vibe to it. That spring break uh, vibe. It really, really did. People were sweating their balls off. People were just sweating their fucking balls. Like you see people in the crowd literally doing this throughout the show. It was hot as fuck in Jacksonville. It was at Daly's Place in Jacksonville, Florida. I do believe that the cons own that location. It's like a concert hall. They use it for music events. But it really came out very good on Bleach Report Live or wherever you were watching it as far as a wrestling event was concerned. I did enjoy it. My only critique was a couple of things. And I'm going to get into them right now before I get into the review and all that stuff. Because at this point, the obvious. Right? I did not like 
the stage that connected the ring to the entrance. I'm just not a big fan of that. I think it just feels very old school, very hokey like. It reminds me of WCW back in the 90s, uh, in the early 90s, if you will. It reminds me a lot of Impact Wrestling. I know Impact does it a lot now, too. All of a sudden, they have that giant stage that connects the ring, right, to the fucking stage. Which, again, I'm just not big on, to be honest. If you're big on it, that's fine. It's just not my cup of tea. And more importantly, I'm going to say this right now. The commentary throughout this show was the bleeding shits. It was. Listen, I got love for Jim Ross, part of my childhood. But goddamn, yo. The guy was off for a little bit. And you know what? It's age, bro. And I said this before and I'll say it again. I feel like with Jim Ross, yeah, he's a legend. All the fuck you want. But he should not be calling every single AEW show. Especially this one. It was a filler show. And listen, I get it. This show was done for the victims of gun violence. It had a good cause behind it. And I will give you that. It's fine and dandy. It was done for a good cause, right? For victims of gun violence and that, that happened in Jacksonville. But at the end of the day, this should have not been fucking, you should have had Jim Ross doing content for every single fucking show. I think you should save Jim Ross for certain big shows, like Double or Nothing. That was a big show. Fucking Fight for the Fallen Today was a free show, right? You, you, you should, have, again, not put him on the show. And hell, even Fighter Fest. Fighter Fest was done, again, it was a free show as well. You shouldn't fucking overexpose Jim Ross for every single show. Double or Nothing was fine. I get that. That was their big first pay-per-view. And All Out coming up. Fine. Use it for Double or Nothing. Use it for All Out. But don't use it for every single filler show. You just, you just shouldn't. Excalibur was okay. I'm fine with him as a commentator. I think he should be trained or transitioned into the voice of AEW. If you will. And let's just get this out of the way. Alex Marvez, I gave this guy another fucking chance. I gave him another fucking chance. I thought I double or nothing. Okay, you know what? The guy never really done the guy he's never really done wrestling commentary. That's fine. Was he good at double or nothing? No. But I'm willing to give him another chance. I'm I was really was willing to give him another chance at here at Fight for the Fallen. And I'm listening to the show, I'm watching the show, and I hear him on commentary. Bruh. He is, I'm saying this right now, the bleeding shits. AEW, Tony Khan, I know you're not watching. I know you're, I know for a fact you're not going to watch this video, which is fine. It is what it is. You can keep Alex Marvez on your payroll if you want to. If you want to waste your money and giving this guy a salary or whatever the fuck it is, go ahead. But please remove Alex Marvez from the commentary from the announce for the announcers table, he has no business literally putting on a headset. Has no fucking business doing this. No fucking reason. Not every company needs a three man booth. I know WWE does it. It's annoying, but just because they're doing it doesn't mean you have to do it. Also, you don't. Impact does a two man booth is. Usually, it's Josh Matthews and Don Callis. Ring of Honor, from time to time, it will be Ian Riccoboni, who I think is great as well, and Cole Cabana. And sometimes they'll put Caprice Coleman, it's fine, but it is what it is. But you don't need a three-man booth. And another thing, I'm just going to say this right now, and the people are like, oh, Steve, how fucked up you are for saying this, okay? Okay, we're going to get into the review. We're going we're gonna to get into it. People might think that I'm shitting on the show completely, but I'm not. I, I did enjoy the show. This show was four hours long. And here's the thing about it. I know WWE at time will go overboard with their shows, which is, fun. again, that's another story in itself. If you want to count the buy-in, right? The buy-in was like, we'll start at 7.30 or so. And then you had the main show. The show did not, la did not end literally until like midnight almost. So you talk about literally almost a four hour, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, it's like 11.30 or so. So you're basically looking at almost... A four-hour show. Almost going into midnight, if you will. Why? Why, why, why? Not every single show needs to be four hours. I'm sorry. It just doesn't. And again, I get it. it you know, it, it's, it's good wrestling. What the fuck you want? I'll give you that. 
But sometimes less is good. I said this during my double or nothing review. Sometimes less is good. Quality over quantity at times. Look at NXT. And again, I don't want to come off. Oh my God, you're bringing up NXT and this shit too. But look at takeovers. Takeovers are usually two hours. Sometimes two hours and 30 minutes. They don't go over four hours. It's not this fucking, not every single AEW show has to be a fucking super indie show. It doesn't, in my opinion. And again, I am not trying to shit on the show. I'm not. I'm just stating out some of the critiques, some of the stuff I wish they do fix. And besides the commentary, again, because the commentary you heard them say throughout the show, literally, uh, are we still alive? Are we still on the air? Uh, we got one more match. We got this. Uh, we got that. And Alex Marvez is beating the bleeding shit on commentary, just saying the most stupidest, outlandish shit on commentary that made, that made no fucking sense. And also, let's get this out of the way, because fuck it, why not? I'm on a roll right now. Let's get this shit out of the way. At the end of the show... You have literally at the end of the at the end of the main event, you have the Young Bucks and Dustin and Cody. After the match, they're I guess the Young Bucks are about to do a post match promo because every indie show has one, right? A post match promo, right? Putting over the opponent, putting over the, the fans and shit like that, right? And they play a music, and I guess they thought they were off the air. They thought they were off there, but they really, really weren't. Right? They were still on the air. We're still on the air, pal. And out comes Brandy, out comes Kenny, Luchasaurus, Jungle Boy, uh, I think Shahid Khan, the father of Tony Khan, with a big-ass check. We're talking a big-ass fucking check for $150,000, all going for the victims of gun, all going towards the victims of gun violence. And again, it was great. Cody cut this promo talking about the victims of gun violence, how this is money going to go to the victims, to the community, to the mayor, and stuff like that, putting over the city of Jacksonville, which again was for the cause of the show, for the victims of gun violence. But then, oh my God, Cody could not fucking help himself. This fucker couldn't help himself. The ego of him. You don't want to let you know that AEW cannot be a freaking... Replicate cannot be cannot cannot be programmably duplicate some shit like that. Oh, it cannot be counter programmed. We here at all elite wrestling cannot be counter programmed and shit like that. And you know what he was talking about. You already knew the moment he said that what the fuck he was talking about. WWE and the fact that WWE did a show through an evolve show on the WWE network at the same time as Fight for the Fall was happening. And again, the ego of them, how we can't be counter-programmed. The revolution starts now, and this and that. And listen, there's times and moments where you say that. But if this is a charity event for the victims of gun violence, you basically said, fuck you to all that, and let my ego go over all this shit. That's basically what he did here. And you know what the sad part about all this is as well? Oh my God, bruh. If this was WWE, and if you had, I wanna, and again, I, you gotta hate that I'm saying this shit. If you had Seth Rollins, or Roman Reigns, or, or fucking, I don't know, Triple H, for instance, right? Say something like this? Oh my God, the backlash on Twitter. Twitter would have a, would go irate. But because AEW and it's Cody Rhodes and everyone apparently is putting Cody on this fucking pedestal that like he is God's gift to wrestling. Oh my God, it, it, it's amazing. Oh God, Cody. Thank you, Cody. You're the best, Cody. Oh my God, Cody Rhodes. And again, I, and I get it. All the indie wrestlers are not, right now are going to be retweeting this shit and liking it because again, who the fuck is going to fucking, I guess... And not call out Cody on its bullshit on the indies. Nobody. Because all of them want jobs in AEW. If they can't make it to WWE. Cody Rhodes is basically want to be Triple H. You see it. You see it right in front of you. And if you don't. Bro, what the fuck are you watching? My G, what the fuck are you watching, bro? 
and you know what? Again, people are going to say, oh, follow that WWE. Are they going to follow that? Honestly, I don't fucking know. And quite honestly, I don't think, again, I said this before in my previous reviews. The main roster is not going to respond to AEW. It's going to be NXT. So don't expect Vince McMahon to all of a sudden on Monday Night Raw or on Tuesday on SmackDown this coming week to change shit. Don't expect Extreme Rules to have a different format all of a sudden. It's not happening. Don't expect Extreme Rules to be the show of the year for WWE programming all of a sudden. Because of fucking Fight for the Fallen. If anything will be, ta- if anything will be NXT. It will be probably another takeover. And there's talk now that NXT might be going to FS1. Coming up, I guess, in the near future. Once they hit the Fox deal. Which I think honestly would be a stupid decision, honestly. Because I think one of the cool things about the network is NXT and takeovers. Unless you do takeovers on the network still, that's fine and dandy. But if you want to do NXT television on FS1, it's fine and dandy. But again, the fact that they're pre-taped like months in advance, eh, unless they go live every single week, but we'll see how that goes as well. Anyway, now let me get into the fucking review. Because again, you may think that I'm shitting on the show, that I'm being too negative. And no, I'm not. It's just minor details that I wish they honestly fix. As we go into as we go into all out, into the near future, as we go into them going into TNT, and then for Cody to say, "Will you guys follow us to TNT?" Again, there's so much, so much stupid shit. It really, really is. All right, all right, dorks. Now let's get into this fucking review. I did watch the buy-in literally late. Cause I came back from work around 9 p.m. So when I got on the Bleach Report live, I saw Hangman Page and Kip Sabin. All right, Kip Sabian, Kip Sabin, whatever the fuck you want to call him. So, like I did say, the crowd was into the show, and then because of the heat, because of the humidity, people were sweating their balls off and shit like that. But, again, that's around the point. Um, if you guys, again, want to follow me on Twitter, at Heel Steve, you want to interact with me throughout the show as well, you the hashtag that you see on the bottom there, underneath my Twitter handle, is hashtag AT point. You know, all that fun stuff, and again, it's up, it's up to you guys, all right? So we kick things off with the kickoff or the buy-in. Again, I get why Big Mike explained it during episode 302 of the TML podcast. We gave our predictions for Extreme Rules and Fighting for the Fallen. If you have not checked that out yet, go give it a, go give it a watch. It's up in the video archive of, of the channel. It's also up on iTunes, Stitcher, Podbean, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and Google Podcast. So we had the buy-in. We had Sonny Kiss versus Peter Avalon. Peter Avalon, the librarian. I guess now Peter Avalon and Leo Bates are now a gimmick. They're now the librarian. They're a tag team and shit, which I kind of predicted was going to happen. And people were booing the crap out of this. I get it. People don't. People are like so against this shit. The gimmick that is. If you watch Being the Elite, you see that Leo loves it. Whatever the fuck it may be. Uh, people were chatting. Reading sucks. Reading sucks. Reading sucks. Again, we're, we're in a time now where Audible is a fucking thing, if you will. You see what I did there? We're at a point now where Audible is fucking this dominating everything like literally who needs books nowadays who needs to read textbooks and shit like that right the match for what it was it was okay nothing to go crazy about it's your basic uh filler match to get to get people rallied up just to get people excited for the show and stuff like that you have, you have excalibur and alex marvez on commentary announcing stuff that's gonna happen later on in the night why you should watch on bleach report live and shit like that throughout this match basically um leva catches uh, Leva Bates uh, cheated to help Avalon, right? But she also helped Kiss back into the ring. So there's a moment in the match where Sonny Kiss is literally on the outside of the ring. He's, he's on the outside. And Leva Bates is right there next to him. And you would think, okay, usually the heel manager does put the boots to, to, the, to the person on the, on the floor or slaps the person, shit like that, right? Instead, Leva Bates throws him into the ring. And Peter Avalon, what the fuck? I could have got a countdown win, right? By the way, Sonny Kiss came out with the entrance with the Jacksonville Jaguar cheerleaders and I guess the mascot twerking and shit. If you're into that, it's fine. It is what it is. Um, keep this in mind. Sonny Kiss was knocked out throughout this too. Um, and Avalon was annoyed by it as well. But ultimately, Sonny Kiss pinned Peter Avalon after he hit a split leg drop off the top rope or off the middle rope, one or the other, but got a one, two, three. And then celebrate. It's funny because Sonny Kiss starts twerking, right? He starts twerking in the middle of the ring. And right there, they cut to like an advertisement or commercial or something like that. 
Not so friendly, motherfuckers. AEW, not so much for everyone, huh? <laughs> Again, I kid. I kid, you dorks. I fucking kid, okay? Um, the Road Brothers backstage gave an interview. Uh, Cody first talked about how how Fight for the Fallen benefits victims of gun how it benefits victims of gun violence. But then later on in the show, oh, we can't be counting a program where you fall off the TNT, right? Then they talked about the Young Bucks with Dustin uh, declaring, "You're only as good as you allow as you, as we allow you to be." Cody reassured the interviewer, who was a beautiful girl, I forgot her name already, um, that he's doing fine after the chair shot that he took at Fighter Fest by Sean Spears. We then had, after this, again, so we had that interview to hype up that match, and again, giving you dorks reasons why you should tune in later on to Bleach Report Live to watch the main show. We then had Bria, yeah, Bia Prisley, who's the girlfriend or the fiance or the wife of Will Ospreay, with Soko Nakajima versus Britt Baker and Riho. Bruh, this match went way too long for no reason whatsoever. This match was the bleeding shits in a way. And again, if you're into the whole Joshi Pro thing, it's fine. Maybe because I'm not familiar with the Riho or Shako Nakajima or shit like that. I'm not familiar with them. And I'm barely familiar a little bit with, with Bea Prisley and Britt Baker. I get it. They're, they're dating... I guess, again, you know, be a person dating Will Ospreay. She's married to him or engaged. And obviously, Britt Baker is the girlfriend of the NFT champion, Adam Cole, baby. But, bruh, this match, again, went long for no reason. But the funny thing in this match, right, Britt Baker is trying to go for a blind tag, but doesn't realize that she goes to the wrong corner. She literally got confused who the fuck her partner was in this match. All of them look alike. Holy shit. They all look alike. In her eyes. In her eyes, they all look alike. Holy shit. <laughs> Fucking Nakajima and Rio, they both look alike in her eyes. That's basically what I got from that. And then she noticed she just ran back to the ring and again, just a very, very eh match. I didn't care. I didn't really give a fuck about it. And again, you had on commentary Jim Ross and you had, not bad, you had Alex Marvez and Excalibur just putting over the show and hyping it up. And again, like I said before, Alex Marvez is the bleeding shits. Get him off commentary. But uh, Soka, Soka, Shoko Nakajima pinned Riho after a step up Hurricane Rana. Um, the team brawled barely, briefly after the, after the match. So there you go. That's the women's division. Again, you know, I think they have a good tapping division right now. I just feel like they need to really tweak up that women's division before they head into television coming up in the fall. But to my understanding, they're going to be presenting the women's championship at All Out. That should be, I guess, something to look forward to coming up in August when they're in Chicago. We then had a backstage interview with Kip Saban. And he said he knows people think he's an underdog. In his match against Adam Page. But he's here to prove he's one of the best in the world. He's also accuses Page of getting whatever he wants because he's in the elite. See what happens when you're best friends with the executive vice presidents of AEW? You get what you want. If I'm Kim Saban, motherfucker, I start being friends with... With, with Peter Avalon, or be friends with MJF, or be friends with, with, with the Young Bucks, or Cody, or start carrying bags for MJF every single, be his young boy, I don't give a fuck, but hey, you gotta do what you gotta do, homie, you gotta do what you gotta do, my man. We then had the main card, so apparently this match was supposed to be on the kickoff or the buy but ended up being on the main card, which I thought was a good decision on their part. You had MJF, Sammy Guevara, and Sean Spears. The same Sean Spears who hit, who put a chair shot in the Cody's head at Fighter Fest. Uh, he's calling him now. He's calling himself the the, the chairman, <laughs> which I thought was very funny, right? Versus Darby Allen, Jimmy Havoc, and Joey Janela. The same Joey Janela that had an altercation with Enzo Amore. The two guys that made pro wrestling look bad, but not having a fist fight at a Blink One Eighty Two concert. I thought this match honestly. Um, was a very fun match. People were into it. Everyone got their shit in, basically. Um, there are moments in this match, though, I don't know if you guys caught this or not, 
where MJF and Jimmy Havoc did not want to tag, did not want to tag in Sean Spears. At the same time, um, I, I want to say Janela and freaking what was it? My bad. MJF and Guevara were, did not want to tag in Sean Spears at all in this match, and they would attack him and sh- like that. And also on the other side of, of the ring, you had again Jimmy Havoc and Joey Janela. Not wanting to tag in Darby Allen. So when they all got in eventually, oh my god, people were going crazy for it. Darby Allen, I will say this, the guy's amazing for what he does. Uh take a lot of risk, but that's fine. Sean Spears is Sean Spears, if you will. Sammy Guevara I want to see more of. I know he does a YouTube series. He's basically wrestling's Casey Neistat when you think about it with his vlogs and shit like that. MGF is just the future. I'm just saying that right now. He is the now, he's the future. He's someone who I think should be competing for the world title down the road. Um, it's crazy. I view him more like world champion Mansur than I do Hangman Page, which is kind of sad when you think about it. But I'll say this too: some of the so again at the same time though, the, just the the way this match was played is kind of disorganized. So you had MJF and Sean Spears in the same team, even though MJF thinks the world of Cody Rhodes and shit like that. But eh, it is what it is. Um, Sean Spears hit hit Darby Allen with the Death Valley Driver for the pin. So that was basically the match, and they also got on commentary. On commentary, because then you had Jim Ross come out, right? So Jim Ross did the main show, and he talked about how again, you know, how Sean Spears and MJF are on the same team, and how MJF was the first guy to come out after Sean Spears hit Cody. He hit, he hit Cody with the chair. He hit literally the chair on Cody and shit like that. To so all that going into it, all right? Uh, Alex Jubilee, Alex Jubilee was seen sitting in the audience with private party. But Jabali was forced to leave by security despite his protest that he bought a ticket. Which, again, you know, hey, there's the same guy from Fighter Fest. And again, why is he being featured on the show? Why are we putting this fucker on the show? The guy can't wrestle for shit. I get it. Fighter Fest was done for with the CEO for this gaming event, all that shit. But guys, listen, let's not give every single fucker airtime. If you wanted to show private party in the crowd, awesome. That was that was great. I'm actually gonna be going to House of Glory come August 9th to see the Young Bucks versus Private Party at their in their final independent match. All the fuck you want. But the point of the matter is if you want to showcase, if you want to showcase private party. And I guess them wanting to watch a tag team match, whatever the fuck it was, later on in the show, right? And them wanting to get a spot in the tournament, which they probably will be, fine. But to put Alex Jabaley? No, it's stupid. It was dumb. We had Brandy Rhodes. Brandy. 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 Rhodes. Brandy. Brandy. I'll buy the Stephanie McMahon entrance, but you kind of get the idea. Damn me. Damn me. Basically, where she is, right? Versus Allie. And accompanying Brandy Rhodes is Awesome Kong. Now, I would have expected uh, Nyla Rose, but hey, she wasn't there. Awesome Kong was a, was a ringside chain to help Brandy throughout, throughout the match. Um, the match, I'll say this, was kind of sloppy. It really, really was. This really... Ugh. It's crazy because they made this story, right? If you watch the um, the Road to Fight for the Fallen on the Nightmare YouTube channel, on the Nightmare Family YouTube channel, they had Brandy like talking about how she wants to prove everyone wrong, how she can wrestle and do this and do that, and how when she was young doing figure skating, how she really wasn't again, how she was the best when she was by herself, but when she was competing, she was terrible in this and that. She started crying. Basically what it was to get you guys invested in her, right? To get you, the fan, wanting to cheer for Brandy Rose. But instead, she played the heel. So basically, you wasted a video wanting people to get invested in her for no fucking reason. But there's a moment in the match where Brandy tapped out to Allie at one point. But the ref was dealing with Awesome Kong and missed it. Uh, Brandy racked Allie's eyes while the ref was still was still wasn't looking, and then hit the spear for the win. A fucking spear ends everything, basically. After the match, Brandy and Awesome Kong started beating up Allie, but Aja Kong, Aja Kong, the legend herself, came out, and the two Kongs, Aja Kong, Awesome Kong, had a stare down after the heels left 
Aja helped Ali to her feet. So, this is what I think will probably happen all out. I could be wrong on this. We could be seeing Aja Kong versus Awesome Kong. Or maybe a tag team match. Or, I don't know, a six-person tag. I don't fucking know. Of Nyla Rose, Brandy, and Awesome Kong and versus Ali. I guess Britt Baker and, I don't fucking know, Riho. I could be wrong. Or if not, a tag team match of Brandy Rose and Awesome Kong and versus uh, versus Aja Kong and Ali. Brandy Rose versus Awesome Brandy Rose Awesome Kong versus Aja Kong and Brandy. I don't and Ali. I don't give a fuck. Do I want to see any of that? No. But it is what it is at this point at juncture. God, too many Kongs. I'm just saying too many fucking Kongs. Too many cons. God damn it. We had after this the dark order of Evil Uno and Stu Garrison. Or Garrison formerly known as the Super Smash Brothers versus Angelico and Jack Evans and Luchasaurus and Jungle Boy. You had Marco Stunt at ringside accompanying Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus. And here's the thing that was funny too. There's a moment in the match where Marco Stunt gets involved. He gets involved in the ring in front of the referee and the referee does not call for the bell. That should have been disqualification right there. And this wasn't the only time in the match where you saw this. It was not. I, I will get into it later on. On the other time wh- during a match where someone got involved in front of the referee and did not end disqualification at this particular event. But the referee kept the match going. Which to me made like, what the fuck? Really? The match for what it was, it was okay. Um, again, everyone got their spots in, if you will. Jungle Boy took an ass beating in this match. I will say that right now. Luchasaurus is awesome for what he does. Uh, for some of his size and, st- and stuff like that. When he got into the mat, people popped crazy for him. Um, after a long struggle, again, like I said, which Jungle Boy refused to give, to give up, right? Evo Uno set up Stu Garrison to hit up the fan... Hit up the... To hit the fan... The, oh, my bad. Hit the, the fatality. That's not even the move. Fatality, right? For the pin. By winning this match, the Dark Order earned a first round bye in the tournament for the AEW Tag Team Championships. So basically, to what I heard, and again, I could be wrong on this, at all out, it'll be the Dark Order versus the best friends, and the winner of that get a buy-in. I don't fucking know. Point is, though, the point is, you know, Jungle Boy took an ass beating. People are getting behind Jungle Boy here. And you would have thought, okay, maybe they'll give it to Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus. But at the same time, you know, there's a program, I guess, with the Dark Order and the Best Friends. So that's fine, too. But damn, the Jungle Boy took an ass beating here. I will, I will say that right now. We then had Hangman Page versus Kip Saban. Now listen, I understand Kip, I understand that Adam Page or Hangman Page is the guy challenging Jericho for the championship. And I will agree with everyone on social media when they said the following. And I will agree. Hangman Page is not someone that I'm going to put the world title on right now. I think he has a good look to him. He looks like a serious player, all the fuck you want. But he's not someone that... I'm screaming, oh my god, world champion right now. I'm not. I know it was, I think it was uh, Brad Shepard who said it on Twitter. And I will agree with him on this. He has like that NWA vibe to him. And I said, you know, he has like that Magnum TA vibe where you know he's going to be champion. It's not going to be now, but down the road he will be. And when it happens, oh my god, it'll be crazy. And that's what I think about when I see Adam Page. He has that NWA vibe. The throwback, so he's like a throwback of Magnum TA before the accident, where, again, he's good talent, he gets over with the crowd, but he's not someone that I'm putting my world title on right now, if you will. And if you're an Adam Hangman Page fan, and if you disagree with me, that's fine as well, that's fine. Everyone has a point of view, okay? Just get that out of the way. This match, literally... It was a twenty minute. It was twenty minute. It was a twenty minute uh, time limit match. Okay, so they literally went back and forth with kicking out of spots. Kip Saban got some good spots in as well. Uh, threw kicks like crazy. Got a, good, a lot of near falls. 
did a tope suicida outside of the ring. There's this one spot that I fucking cringe. And I talked about earlier how I'm not a fan of the fucking stage connecting to the fucking ring. Adam Page threw, had, had it keep saving the power bomb. And he just tossed him outside the ring onto the stage. So Kip Saban landed back first. Bruh, I cringed. I fucking cringed when that happened. God damn it, yo. But again, just back and forth. And for a moment, you thought, okay, they're going to go to a draw. God damn it. Another fucking match that goes to a t- fucking time limit. Is that the new AEW gimmick? But no. Did not happen at all. Adam Page, at the last minute, 60 seconds going into the match, hits the rite of passage. I think he's now calling it dead eye, right? But I know that the fucking rite of passage onto Saban for a three count. So after the match is over, right, someone wearing black clothes from and, and the Dark Order's uh, skull mask, right? Attacked Adam Page, and you knew who it was from the get. You already knew who it was. I seen this shit before. Like the lights went out, like the, the lights went out, and they, they went back on, and this guy was in the ring, right? And I saw this at All In, right? It was Jericho, Jericho in the Dark Order attack with the Dark Order skull mask, right? Attacking Adam Page, did the fucking uh, the code breaker, bloodied up Adam Page, took off his mask. It was Jericho. We knew it was him. We're not stupid, and the, the idea that these guys were trying to insult on commentary, Jim Ross and, and Alex Marvel, ugh, and, and Excalibur were trying to, sh- trying to insult our intelligence, like we knew it was fucking Jericho already. We're not dumb, motherfucker. We're not. And that's what happened. He attacks Adam Page and hits him with the code breaker and left him in a bloody mess, basically. Keep this in mind, Jericho comes out later on in the show as well. And again, people at this point of the show were exhausted. The crowd, that is. You see a lot of this in the crowd. I shit you not. The pros and cons of having a show in an outside venue. I thought it was great. The view looked great all the fuck you want. But the big con is, bro, it's Florida. It's humidity. You're sweating your balls off, bro. You're literally sweating your balls off in the crowd. We had the Lucha Bros... Of Pentagon Jr. and Phoenix versus SoCal Insensitive, Scorpio Sky, and Frankie Kazarian. Yeah, Daniel was at, literally at ringside. So this match also went back and forth. This was another crazy ass match. And I said before how earlier in the uh, the triple threat tag team match, right, between the Dark Order and Angelico and Jack Evans and uh, Luchasaurus and Jungle Boy, how Mark Stun got involved right in front of the referee and the referee didn't stop the match or didn't, or or call for disqualification. Well, in this match, too, Christopher Daniels did um, a Himalayan, like, moonsault, right? Hit a moonsault, I think it was, yeah, onto the outside. And the referee, right, saw, sees this shit. It's in front of her. It doesn't call for the bell. That should have been disqualification. Again, there's when I see Bullshell call it out, okay? Let's keep it 100 here. But the same thing, you say, oh, but Steve, you know, she doesn't want to call it on a stupid shit. She wants the match to continue, good wrestling. But it's fine and dandy, but still, wrestling rule book 101. If someone gets involved in the match in front of the referee, you call for the bell. That's how it is. That's how I was brought up on, motherfuckers. I'm sorry. Just the way that it is. But again, it's a crazy back and forth match. These guys, the Lucha brother, were throwing these crazy ass chops onto everyone from SCU. Looked, you can just, I can filter from here. Like, holy shit, ah, shit, that shit, like it hurt. The way the Pentagon and Phoenix were chopping the fuck out of Kazarian, uh, freaking uh, Scorpio Sky and Christopher Daniels and shit like that, right? A crazy back and forth. Glad in your falls here. But it was all said and done, right? It was all said and done. Pentagon hit a package pile driver on Scorpio Sky. They get the pen, right? To do that whole package pile driver, like stomp from the top from the top rope pin, base the double team maneuver for the win, basically. And after this, right after the match, the Lucha Brothers, the Lucha Brothers, right? It took out they took out SCU, right? And then they climbed a ladder, basically. 
And from the top of the ladder, they challenged the Young Bucks to a ladder match at All Out. They're talking about how they are the best tag team on the planet, not the Young Bucks, and they want to challenge them to a match at All Out Comic Chicago. I'm pretty sure I'm, on being the elite, they'll accept the challenge. Likely it'll be for the AAA Tag Team Championships. I got. I want to believe that, but we'll see what happens. We then get what again people thought was the main event. I keep this in mind. I when I came home, I I, I turned on a, on Bleach Report Live and it was Hangman Page and Kip Saber. So I thought already that okay that Cody and Dustin match with the Young Bucks already happened. That's what I thought, but I was wrong. So it seemed. We had Kenny Omega versus Shima. I loved it. I liked this match. I really, really did. I did enjoy this match. I thought this was probably the match of the night for me, in a way. Um, a crazy ass back and forth. Um, they basically is Kenny having once again that strong style match from Japan. You know, someone like Shima, they had a lot of good chemistry there too. Uh, Shima had Kenny and a lot of these like submission maneuvers and a lot of innovative stuff here as well. There's a moment in the match, right? Where Kenny goes for the timekeeper's table. Usually in wrestling, you see them go for the announce table, right? But they went for the timekeeper's table, which I was amazed. I was impressed too. And Shima climbs up a level, right? In the, in the venue. And Kenny's right there, just lying there on the timekeeper's table. And... Shima does a Meteora onto Kenny Omega onto the timekeeper's table, which looked very crazy from, from where I was from, from watching it here. I can, I can only imagine being there live would have been more crazier, but still, you kind of get the idea. Something you usually don't see if you think about it. But again, it's a crazy back and forth, a lot of near falls here. Literally, uh, Shima hit every, Kenny Omega with every single move, and Kenny kicked out, Kenny kicked out, and vice versa too with Shima. Kenny hit like multiple V triggers and Shima, t Shima kicked out, right? But it was all said and done. Kenny pinned Shima after a one winged angel, a one winged angel after, to finish a hard fought match. And again, on commentary as well, they talk about how Kenny Omega needs a win. He needs a win. He's a comeback with the win and stuff like that. So when you say that on commentary, especially that being Alex Marvez, like you knew going into Kenny was going to win. So there was that. We then had Chris Jericho come out to talk about having Adam Page's blood. This is basically where he won a thank you, right? A thank you for another sellout. A thank you for, you know, to Jericho because of Jericho, a W now is on TNT and stuff like that. How all this would never happen without Chris Jericho, right? That's Jericho's gimmick right now. And here's the thing about it too. And I found this shit funny as hell, bro. I thought this shit was hilarious. So people were sweating their balls off, right? At this place in Jacksonville, right? Everyone's sweating their asses off. It's humidity. It's hot as shit. It's Florida. It's summer. Everyone's doing this. You see Jericho wearing a black hat, a jacket, a scarf. It's like, bro, it's like a big fuck you to the crowd. Like, me seeing him, if I was there, bro, just seeing him wear that would make me sweat even 10 times more. I would have been drenched in sweat to seeing Jericho wearing all that. I'm just saying. It's detail, motherfucker. It's fucking detail, okay? And he's talking about how he had Adam Page's blood in his hand. He held his, his hand up, showing pinkish, red stains, basically, right? He insulted the crowd in Jacksonville. He said he's going to beat the crap out of everyone all the wrestling, starting with Adam Page. He went on about now how nobody... Would care about AEW if it weren't for him. He put down Adam Page some more. And keep this in mind too as well. All this is happening. Um, You have basically just him just going and going and going. The crowd, at first they were into it. And I'm going to say this right now. If I'm to choose between Jericho and Adam Page and who the fuck I put the world title on. I'm going to go with Chris Jericho. I don't say this too. Let's get, let's get that out of the way. Jericho looks old as shit. He looks old as shit. But if I'm the pick who to put the belt on right now to establish my company going forward, I'll put it on to Chris Jericho. Okay. Page came. Page comes out and he goes after Jericho. The the, the entire locker room come out too. Like, I guess the referees, if you will. 
Yeah, Jerry Lynn was there too. Keith Marshall was there as well, trying to break all this shit up to no avail. But again, to hype up their match, to get a little brawl going, which was fine. Just to hype up their match coming up at Fight for the Fall. My bad, at All Out, basically, right? And I literally thought for a second, because you have Jericho just st standing there on that giant stage, right? That connects the ring to the entrance. I thought Paige was going to, like, do some crazy-ass move. Because, again, early on in the match, Paige does, like, a moonsault outside the ring and hurts his fucking leg. The same leg that he got hurt in the match with his Pac. But, again, that didn't happen either, but it is what it is. But, like I said before, though, if you ask me right now who I would have win at All Out between Jericho and Hangman Page, I already said it, it's Jericho. Hangman Page is someone that will be world champion. Don't get me wrong. It's just not going to happen now. I'm sorry. It's not happening now. Down the road, yes. I see more money in, in Adam Page chasing the champion than him getting the belt right now, in my opinion. We then get the main event. We get the main event of the evening. God damn, literally... You would think by now, holy shit, this shit would have been ended, would have been over already, right? But no. Yeah, the Young Bucks versus Cody and Dustin Rhodes. This match, for what it was, was a fun little match. Not to go crazy about here. It was the main event, obviously. Um, just a your typical Young Bucks match. At the same time, though, I feel like the Road Brothers made the Young Bucks more serious in this match too. Um, there's a moment where. I want to say there were moments in the, in the beginning of the match where Dustin would try to tag in Cody, but the, the Young Bucks took Cody out off the apron and stuff like that. Uh, there were super kicks as well by the Young Bucks. Even Cody and Dustin threw a super kick. There is this whole thing at, near the end of the match where both the Young Bucks hit the rope, and instead of going for the super kick, they, they get down and they do an uppercut punch on both Dustin and Cody. Their typical like goldless maneuver, if you will. Cody does it as well. And then... The, the Rose Brothers countered with the super kick of their own. But again, there's a crazy just back and forth match, if you will. They did a double crossroad for a near fall as well. By because the Bucks kicked out. And it was all said and done. The Bucks won. No shit. After hitting the Melter driver on Cody. Which I thought again, you know, made sense. Who we're gonna have win? I have the Young Bucks win. Because the Young Bucks, from what it looks like. They're going into All Out in the ladder match, right? Now, I do feel that at All Out, we'll see Cody versus Sean Spears. You got to believe they're going to build up that match. They're going to hype that match up a little bit more. It'll be stupid if they don't. It makes no sense if they don't do that, right? But that was the thing. And then, like I said before, we had Matt Jackson. He took the mic and acknowledged that the match had gotten really competitive. And they have, he said that he had... He, he and Nick made fun of the Road Brothers, and it was all in spirit of competition. He admitted that although he heard of the legend of the Rhodes Brothers, he's never seen them as a team because he doesn't watch the other product. Bullshit. Bullshit. Um, the promo was interrupted by the entrance by the by entrance music as Shad Khan. I said Shahid earlier, but it's Shad Khan. Uh, Brandy Rhodes, Kenny Omega, Jungle Boy, Luchasaurus entered along with a representative from the Victim Assistance Advisory Council, Council who uh, Khan presented a giant check of $150,000. Cody finished by saying that, then again, this is the shit that I was talking about earlier. Again, all this was great. They gave the check. They talked about the victims of gun violence, how the city of Jacksonville is important, and stuff like that. If they would have ended with that, fine. But then Cody couldn't help himself. And I said this earlier on in the podcast. Cody couldn't fucking help himself. He just couldn't help himself. You can't count a program with all elite wrestling is doing. You can't count a program us. And then he asking the crowd if, if they'll join AEW on TNT this fall. To a huge cheers. Omega then thanked the crowd for helping them raise money and said goodnight. And like I said before, they couldn't help themselves. They really, really didn't. And again, and like I said before, do I see Vince responding? No. Do I see them? Do I see Extreme Rules tonight? Because again, today is Extreme Rules, by the way. Do I see them responding in any capacity? No. Do I see Triple H responding? Yeah. I see that happening. I think Triple H will respond. 
on the upcoming takeover or shit like that, or at a conference call or something like that. This show, again, I did enjoy, okay? From a wrestling standpoint. And again, there's a lot of stuff to criticize. You can't look at this show and not look at stuff to, to criticize. You can't ignore it. You just can't. You gotta call it like it is. Because if this is WWE, I guarantee a lot of you do the same thing as well. They gotta get rid of Alec Marvez, get him out of commentary. If you wanna make him do a do back to interview, that's fine. Go ahead, do that. But keep that guy away from commentary. Jim Ross should not be calling every single fucking show for AEW. He should not. This show essentially was a filler show with the good cause for the victims of gun violence. Let's not take let's not, let's not let's not ignore that. Okay, let's not ignore that for a bit. But this technically was a filler show on their way to all about coming up in September, coming up in August. Okay. But other than that, there again, this show as well went four hours long. Did not even be four hours long. Oh, but Steve, the show started at eight o'clock. But hey, man, a lot of people when they talk about WWE shows being long, they count the kickoff show too. So I'm counting the buy-in as well. So shut the fuck up. But nonetheless, I enjoyed the wrestling here. I did not watch the Evolve show yet. I will watch that sometime this week. I will do a review on it sometime this week as well. Evolve the 10th anniversary show. But guys, give me your thoughts. I welcome your feedback in the comment threads of this video. Or if not, let me know on Twitter at HeelSteven. Use the hashtag ATPoint so I know it's for the podcast, if you will. So I know it's for this video and all that stuff. Okay, I will be back, I will be back later on tonight for my Extreme Rules review. I doubt there will be a Russell Companion today. I really doubt it. I'll keep you guys posted on Twitter if we do so or not. I have work in a couple of hours, so I'm going to work too later. I'll be back just in time for Extreme Rules. I'll just keep that in mind, okay? But anyway, guys, if you guys enjoyed this, again, please do me a favor, guys. Give this a big old thumbs up. Leave a big old thumbs up, if you will, okay, guys? All right, share through social media. Wherever you share videos, all fun stuff. Hit the subscribe button down below. I want to give a big thank you to the homie himself, Sal Rex, for the awesome graphic over that he's done for the video that you see, obviously, me on right now. And, of course, as the fucking thumbnail. If you are a YouTuber, if you are a podcaster, and you want awesome graphics done for your YouTube channel, your podcast, wherever it may be, Hit him up on Twitter at SRXGFX. Not only does the man does graphic design for me, but for JD from NY206, The Solid Monster, House of Glory, Big Mike, and so many other people. Arguably, Sal Rex is the best graphic designer in the IWC today. Prove me wrong, motherfucker. Prove me the fuck wrong. And I can speak for, I think I, I, think I can speak for myself, JD, Solid Monster, Big Mike, House of Glory, and anyone that's worked with him before. That we are lucky to have Sal Rex on our team. If you have not yet checked out episode 302 of the team of podcast, we gave our predictions for Extreme Rules. Also, Fight for the Fallen. We talked about Joey Janela and Enzo Amore and their fight at a Blink 182 concert in New Jersey. Give that a watch, give that a listen. It's up on the podcasting platform like iTunes, Stitcher, uh, Podbean, Spotify, iHeartRadio, all the other spots as well. And that's going to be it for me. I'll be back later on tonight for the Extreme Rules review. A lot of fun stuff. As always, Dorks, it's me, it's Steve, and I am out like Janet Jackson's titties. Peace out, Dorks. This has been Around the Point.